I see you. Sentry mode activated. Target acquired. Dispensing product. Hi, I'm Zach. Back in college, a friend of mine introduced me to the Portal series. Ever since then, I've been in love with that content. But there was one character, or I guess group of characters you should say, that uh, really stood out to me. Since then, I've always wanted one for myself. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to make a Portal turret. I found some fantastic files for my 3D printer and organized them in Cura's 3D space. Of course, the link to the G-code is in the video down below. After I had the G-code to my liking, I fired up the printer and got started. In what felt like no time at all, the files printed successfully. I cleaned up the excess plastic off of the prints and sanded down all of the rough edges from the supports. Each quarter piece of the wings were glued together with super glue. After the room was opened and ventilated, some Bondo body filler was mixed up and used to fill the gap where the super glue was used on the wings. After the filler cured and fully hardened, multiple sessions of sanding and reapplications of filler and spot putty, sandable primer, all were used on the wings, body housing, and legs until the print lines were manageably flat. Each of the pieces were propped up with popsicle sticks and hot glue, then brought out to the garage for a couple coats of paint. When I was satisfied with how things were looking, the parts were cleaned off with a rag and isopropyl alcohol to remove excess dust, oil, and other unwanted particulates. Everything got four coats of glossy paint. Bright white for the turd, of course, military green for the ammunition box. While everything was fully drying, I had the perfect opportunity to decide the electronics that were going to be installed. I thought that it would be so cool that if the turret eye not only lit up red, but actually had a real working laser in the center of the eye, like you see in the games. After a little bit of thought, I pulled a tiny little low-powered laser diode with its switchboard out of some scrap electronics. The board was modified so that I could control the laser from a control box. The laser was glued in the center of the eye so that four red LEDs could be soldered around the assembly. A couple resistors were added where needed. Circuits were then tested. I see you. Goodbye. The fully wired turret eye was installed into the main body, then glued into place as was the decorative piping and wiring. The body assembly was processed at this time so that it could be painted silver, then hit with a light coat of clear matte. When it was dry, the body pieces were installed into the white casing. I found a spare bolt that would fit perfectly in the body assembly that would hold up the wings on each side. The bolt was ground down in the garage with an angle grinder, then easily, easily, slid into place on the turret. The legs of the turret were cut out of tin, bent into shape with pliers, then flattened as best as I could with the tools I had, a hammer. The legs were bent and designed out of a stress-hardened 15-gauge wire. To say that this was done by trial and error would be an understatement. The Katie of all trades saw the project around this time, in between several of her own projects, mind you, and thought it was pretty cool. She's a way better hand painter than I am, so I put her on the task of freestyling some of the black paint that you see on the interior of the wings. When she was busy with that, I was finishing some of the gluing and painting on the legs. She did such a good job that she was promoted to the title of Cricket Katie. I designed a couple files in Photoshop for the wording on the turret box. Cricket Katie imported, printed, and might I say, 
perfectly applied the designs to the turret ammunition box. I made a switch box around this time to control the turret from a distance out of a little 3D printed box and some custom wiring. Maybe someday, that could be a video in itself. The switch box was soldered to the wires I routed out of the bottom of the body assembly earlier. After everything was shrink tubed and nicely tucked into the body housing, I felt it was time to fix the mistake that I made painting the legs. Before as you saw I painted the legs white. Life would be so much easier if I painted the whole leg assembly flat black, then hand paint the white on top. So I did. The black paint went on very easily. After the black dried all the way, the tops of the leg housing were hand painted white. The barrel tips were painted silver. I'd say it's about time our little friend got some finished legs. The holes at the base of the turret were carefully filled with Gorilla Glue using a toothpick. In order for the glue on the legs to set exactly the way that I wanted, the turret was stood up and posed to dry. The glue dried overnight, then it was finally time to put the wings on the metal arms. A small amount of super glue was applied to the wing holes. The wings were pressed into the arms and quickly measured to make sure that the spacing was spot on before the glue set. You can't have a portal turret without its trademark antenna wires. A couple small bare tin wires were glued to the top of the body. A couple kinks in the antenna wire later and we have our finished turret. Glamour shots in three, two, one. Hey, thank you so much for checking out my video. Thank you. Like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend. I really had a blast putting this project together for you guys. Hello, friend. Okay, also, check out my Twitter page. I will be sure to try to keep you up to date on all of my current projects. Also, if you like fun previous projects, I made this fun little arc reactor. If you want to see how I did that, I will be sure to link that uh, video at the end sequence. So until next time though, see you later. Goodbye.